Well, good afternoon. Uh, yes, we are back. We are back in the Ask Academy. And today we're going to be continuing our conversation by introducing you to logarithmic functions. Hi, how are you today? I hope you're doing good. I guess right. It's just for you. And uh, that, those logarithmic functions are what we're going to be looking at uh, today. So I'm going to introduce those, that concept to you and how it relates to exponentials that you're more familiar with. And the first thing I want to ask you to do is to look at how to rewrite an expression or an equation that is in logarithmic uh, or is in exponential form. You're familiar with that. You've been working with bases, raised to powers, and, inter and being some kind of answer. And those are the three words I want you to identify these three pieces. The base of the exponent, the power of the exponent, and the answer of the exponent. And rewriting in logarithmic is simply just rearranging those three things in an equation, but writing it in a logarithmic equation. So how we're going to do that is we're going to uh, write it with our uh, LOG, which is a short uh, the short version of logarithmic. And uh, if you're looking on your calculator, you can find that LOG key. And that LOG, uh, we're going to write this, we're going to take now this base written from the exponential, and we're going to write it in what we call a subscript position. It's in the lower left hand corner of that LOG. Whatever number that base is, we're going to write there in that position. And then we're going to take this answer of the exponential form, and we're going to write it in this position next to the logarithmic. And we're going to set that equal to then the power. The logarithm is the, is, uh, the logarithmic equation or function is, a, is the inverse of exponential. And exponential is the inverse of logs. These are, these are inverse functions of each other. So we, in rewriting it, uh, this is how we can do that following this pattern. And so uh, all we're doing again is taking these three parts of the exponential and rewriting it. This is going to be a very powerful skill for you to be able to use even in solving uh, equations when we get to those difficult challenging things uh, we'll be able to do that. Uh, so in this, in this section what we're having you work on in section 7.5 in logarithms we're going to take some, some logarithmic expressions and then we want you to be able to rewrite them back into uh, logarithm. Before we do that I want to give you one more example of this. If we have a base being raised to a power we know that that answer is 100. This is what you're very familiar with. You've been doing this for a long time. Well, let's take this and rewrite it into logarithmic form. Again, we're going to write it in log. And then whatever number the base is, we're going to write in that subscript. Then we're going to write the answer of the exponential in this position. And then we're going to set that equal to the power. So again, logarithmic equations isolate the power. It gets the exponent all by itself. And so if we have, let's do one more example, let's say uh, 4 to the third power, well we know that to be 64. So now let's rewrite that in log. That log expression, again, what's the base? What's the answer? What's the power? Exactly right. So we can take these expressions, we can take them now, and we can even add things like if I had an unknown, uh, where the exponent is in the power position, uh, the exponent is variable, and we can rewrite this in log, and what that will do is isolate this would be log base 3 of the answer 27 and that isolates that variable x and th so I will teach you at some point when we're solving these kind of equations when you see the variables in the exponent spot you can write in exponential form you can rewrite that into logarithmic form and therefore you'll be able to uh, solve that when I'll show you how to use your calculator to do these kind of things. So, that's one way of doing uh, logarithmic. So that's one of the skills I want you to be able to learn um, and have, uh, have a working knowledge of, so we're going to use some practice on that. We're also going to ask you to use a calculator, so make sure you can go to, to the calculator, find the LOG key. And uh, something else, some, some basic understandings of what logarithms, since we're introducing them to you today, uh, of what logarithms are, we have a couple of logs that we, with, with specific bases, that we find one of them occurs so common 
out in the natural world that we gave it the phrase, the title, the common log. Well, that log is base 10. And we write log expressions with, uh, with a base of 10, but it's so common, we use it so much, we find it occurring so commonly that we don't uh, write the 10. Now, if you look at your calculators, you find that LOG key, you notice that it doesn't have a base written uh, in the subscript position. That is always in base 10. Your LOG key on your calculator is always in base 10, that LOG. So that's a common law and how that occurs knowing it's base 10. Again, I want you to read this, write this English down. The logarithmic expression asks this question. <clears throat> what power would you apply to a base to get the answer? So again, if you're looking at this expression, if it helps you until you get used to it to write the 10, you can now solve this and find the answer to this without a calculator if, it's, if they give you the problems to practice, and they do. Instead of without a calculator, let's look at this and answer this question. I'll repeat it. What power would you apply to the base to get the answer? So what's the base? 10. What's the answer? 1,000. Well, what is the power that you would raise 10 to to get to that answer? The answer then, the power is so this particular expression has that as a solution. Uh, so that's what the common log is. Well, there's another type of log that occurs so naturally in nature and a part of our world and things that happen all across our, uh, our globe that we call it the natural log. And it has a base of E. Now that base of E, you could write L-O-G with the base of E, because we know that's just a number. But we use another symbol to communicate this natural log. And it is, on your calculator, some of the calculators they use capital L-N. Uh, on the worksheets they use lowercase L-N. And those are, the, those are the same, don't let that confuse you. But this is what we use for the, for the natural um, log. And what we want to uh, communicate to you is its base is E. And so if they ask you to find the natural log of, of some number, <clears throat> then again you'd go to the calculator and you would find the natural log of 7. But I want you to recognize that we so often find it that we, if you look at your calculator, that LN key doesn't have a subscript base written as E. We just need to know it. So again, if it helps you for a while to write that base of E until you get used to it, don't feel bad. It's okay. You can do that. But uh, we just don't, we don't write that naturally because it occurs so naturally all through. It's just a normal thing that we do. When you see the LN, you know it's a natural log, and you know that base is E. That's right. We're we'll getting used to that uh, concept. We become more and more familiar with logarithms, logarithmic functions, logarithmic expressions, and how they relate to exponentials that we're more familiar with. Okay? So other things we're going to ask you to do is be able to use a calculator. Use LN or the log key, knowing that LN is the base C e and log is in base 10. And then the next, last thing that we're going to do in this section is to be able to uh, look at logarithmic uh, expressions and be able to find uh, the inverse. So I'm going to give you an equation and I'm going to ask you to find its inverse. So we're going to revisit and review what we can learn about uh, finding inverse functions. So we have this equation. The first step that you do, just like we learned in the previous chapter, is that everywhere you see y, you write x. Everywhere you see x, you write y. And then once you get to this point, you want to say, well, okay, I want to isolate y, but it seems, looks like it's being multiplied by the log of 5, but you don't divide by log of five, log base 5. You rewrite in exponential form, like we just learned how to do. So again, what would the uh, we're going to write this from log to exponential. So what's the base? 5. What's the power? That's x. What's the answer? That's y. And so now we've got, we usually write the y on the right and left hand side. That is your inverse function. We're going to ask you to follow those steps 
to get that done. Now it's going to be a little familiar. Be familiar when you see LOG that the base is 10. They're not going to write it. Be familiar when you see LN that the base is E. They're not going to write it for you. You know this. Now it's the natural log. Hey, this is, the, this is logarithms, our first introduction to it. How it relates to exponentials. Knowing that logs are the inverse of exponentials. How to rewrite from logs to, in, uh, to in, uh, exp, um, exponential form, from exponential to log form, and to be able to uh, work with these in our calculators. Uh, work with it, have fun, get stronger, because we are now separating ourselves from the rest of the world in our algebraic world and algebraic muscles. We are the Ask Academy.